we uh, invent or we create um, testing in order to understand and to evaluate specific features of the devices or devices in general that we want to uh, translate to the clinical practice. So for the aspiration catheters, the uh, testing that we usually do and we like, because we know that we can really um, use that knowledge the clinical practices trackability. So trackability means that we have mm, conceived and developed specific vascular phantoms having specific characteristics and challenging actually the trackability of the aspiration catheters. And we use a um, tensile machine, for example, to push the catheter through the phantoms until we measure the distance uh, covered by the catheter and the force needed to uh, the catheter to be pushed uh, through that distance. Um, for aspiration parameters, also we evaluate the aspiration force and flow rate. Force is the force developed when once the catheter is blocked, meaning there's a cloth, for example, stuck in the the sub tip of the catheter, while the flow rate is the amount, let's say, water that is aspirated through or by the catheter in a specific unit of time. And then, of course, we have uh, flow rate and aspirational force. These force are more related to specific parameters, which are the diameter, basically the diameter of the device and also the reaction of the, the catheter. We have cases in which, for example, the distal tip of the catheter collapses under aspiration, and so this reduces the diameter of the distal tip. And so with the diameter also, we have reduction of the flow rate and aspiration force. So in, in a sense, it's the behavior of the catheter making the success of such flow rate and aspiration force. But again, the very first, let's say, objective during a thrombo aspiration procedure is to get in contact uh, with the clock. And so trackability is probably the main uh, characteristic, the most important uh, characteristic for an aspiration catheter or a catheter in general. The other thing uh, related to the behavior, related to the collapse of the distal tip of the catheter, is that when we use an aspiration catheter in combination with a centriever, we have three components, which are the centriever, the clot, and the aspiration catheter. So in order to ensure that the clot really enters into the aspiration catheter, we would like to have the centriever catching the clot and uh, bringing the clot uh, close to the um, distal tip of the catheter. So if the distal tip of the catheter tend to collapse, then we could have a conflict. And the final result of this interaction between the clot, the stand, and the catheter would be the um, fragmentation of the clot or the changement of the position of the clot, which was uh, in the first in the first um, moment and coaxial to the to the catheter, and then for some reason, for such uh, let's say not perfect interaction, is put by by the side and not entering into the aspiration catheter. So what we see, for example, in the new uh, red um, family of the of the penumbra catheters, they have, let's say, metallics or scaffolding uh, going to the distal tip, and so the the portion of the silicon uh, remains very short, and this reduces the the trend to to collapse during aspiration, and so probably also improves the interaction with the centriever in case of combined thrombectomy. The good news was that, again, the structure and this, the, the famous now distal tip was uh, shorter. And, and I mean, the, the, the part of the distal tip, which is not visible under X-ray because it's not rather big, is shorter. And so the tendency to collapse is absolutely lower or um, basically is not collapsed.